The platform in the first challenge integrates a visual camera for the detection of the marker on the landing platform. Different cameras have been integrated for this purpose. Other different systems have been also integrated in the multi-rotor. At the beginning, the multi-rotor takes off from its initial position and flies towards the area of operation. The ground control team monitors data from the onboard cameras and from the autopilot in a ground control station to check the performance of the operation. At the first phase, the multi-rotor flies at a certain altitude to cover the largest area in which the platform may move. The detection algorithm is running on the onboard computer in order to detect the marker as soon as possible. Once the landing platform is detected, the tracking algorithm estimates the relative position to the platform using the images from the onboard camera and commands the necessary references to follow the platform and get closer to it. In the approach phase, the multi-rotor uses the relative position estimation based on vision cameras to navigate and maintain the relative distance to the landing platform. At this moment, the landing command is executed and the multi-rotor starts to descend as long as it does not deviate from the platform. The electromagnet is active, so the multi-rotor is attached to the platform at the touchdown moment. As the second challenge starts, the robot calculates its initial absolute position and altitude. Since the panel structure will be in the camera's field of view from the beginning of the mission, if the target has an easily identifiable color and geometry, image processing techniques could be used for visual tracking and navigation. When the robot arrives at the panel, it'll navigate around the structure facing each side in search of the valve and tools with the camera installed in the top of the robotic arm. Once the valve stem is located, the robot's position with respect to the panel's plane will be corrected to a predefined pose in preparation for the next phase. The robotic arm will approach the valve stem to measure its size. Then it will evaluate the set of wrenches and select the appropriate one. Lastly, the robotic arm will grasp the correct tool. The robotic arm will then orientate the wrench with respect to the valve stem and begin an approaching movement towards it.
Challenge 3 will be performed by a team of three UAVs provided with cameras, GPS, an electromagnetic gripper, and an onboard computer. Field tests have been carried out with mock ups of the objects with the size, shapes, and colors given in the challenge description document. The vision system detects the targets and provides the ground control station with a list of candidates with their characteristics. The detection is performed on board each UAV. A simulator using ROS and Gazebo has been developed for software integration, validation and global strategy analysis. Each UAV, its status and its planned trajectory are represented in different colors. Current target waypoint inside the planned trajectory is highlighted in each case. A trajectory is assigned to each UAV in order to cover the whole stage looking for the target objects. Their position, shape and color are estimated while navigating. The task of picking a static black object is allocated and executed by UAV1. The features of the object are shown in the visualization window. In the same way, UAV2 proceeds to pick a dynamic blue object. Before releasing an object, each UAV has to check that no other team member is inside the dropping zone. Once out of the dropping zone, the UAVs can continue performing their tasks. We have also simulated the collaborative picking, transportation and deployment of the large objects by means of two multi-rotors. Particularly, we have developed and simulated appropriated control techniques by taking into account the dynamic models of two hexarotors connected to the suspended object. Different prototypes of electromagnetic grippers have been tested with static and moving objects. 